to the point where we'll go over those. Um, I have a guest here with me telling about a product that I like to use when I fast. We have a ton of information to cover. I think that probably it's a blessing that you showed up because there's two, two things in my life that I have s seen and bear witness to stimulating healing in the human body like no other thing that you've maybe ever experienced. The first thing is chiropractic. Um, those of you who know me, I traveled around the world to put chiropractic to the test and I wanted to serve as many thousands of people as I could and see what a single chiropractic adjustment could do for them and it blew me out of the water and I said, I don't know how I became a chiropractor but this is the greatest healing profession on planet Earth. So my wife and I said, we're going to open up a clinic in Bend, Oregon. And the second thing that I've found in all of my time traveling around the world um, and experiencing it myself is fasting. This has the potential to unlock something magical inside of you called innate. Um, the galaxies, the stars, the sun, the moon, the trees, the plants, the earth, the rocks, the stones, and your body all have the same power within it that comes from somewhere else. Um, when we talk about the galaxies and the cosmos and the stars and the moon and planet earth and everything on earth, we call that universal intelligence, where we learn that there is actually order to what is going on up there. So there's order and disorganization, right? And we know that that must come from somewhere, whatever your belief is. And that same power is harvested in every single human cell in your body. And the universal intelligence harvested in the human body is called innate intelligence. And what innate intelligence is, is that at every second of every single day, every cell in your body knows exactly what it's doing. Even if you think it's failing you, it's doing it for a specific and certain reason to give you and move you closer to exactly where you need to be at every instant of your life. So even the sick cells in your body are sick for a specific reason. You might not understand why, and medicine might not understand why, and I might not understand why, but the reality is we don't need to understand why. We just need to know that your body is doing something to keep you alive. When a tumor grows, it's growing to wall something off. It builds the tumor to protect the, the cells around your body to, to, to keep it walled off into a, a specific space. Okay? A tumor is an innate expression of something bad happening. Because if that tumor might not have formed, then something really bad might have happened and all those nasty cells could have transferred to every other cell in your body and wiped you out. So every single thing that happens to you for every single reason that it happens is done for a specific certain reason to keep you alive and keep you healthy. And humans, if you haven't figured this out by now, are the most resilient form of life on planet Earth because how could anything else have made it through what we've made it through in the past 40, 50,000 years on this planet? Agreed? So we have something special inside of us, all right? Now, there's a whole bunch of different things that we need to cover tonight, and I'm going to do my best to get us out of here as fast as we can, but please don't, if you have to leave, leave, but I'm going to try and keep it within an hour, fair? Mm -hmm. So fasting, uh, I can't tell you how many people I talked to today, and I said, hey, come to class, we're going to talk about not eating, mm -hmm. and so many people laughed, and they're like, that's the class that I'm not going to go to, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine, we're going to talk about not eating. And I'm going to teach you how something that you already know innately is the most powerful thing. You just need to learn how to harvest it so that you can get your expression for, your expression for yourself back. Okay? So there's lots of different types of fast. Anyone ever been on a fast? Raise your hand. Okay? And I'm assuming maybe we all did something different, and that's okay. There's just lots of different types of fasts. So let me tell you what we're going to talk about today and what we're not going to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about water fasting. Plain, simple water fasting. We're not going to talk about bone fast, bone broth fasting, or whey water fasting, or vegetable or juice fasting. We're going to talk about water fasting. That means you're not going to eat any, you're not going to consume anything except water. All right. I'll get into the details about that. And not everyone in this group is going to participate with the fast in the fast that we're starting um, on Monday evening next week at. Uh, 7, 8, 7 p.m. Not everyone's going to participate, but some of you might feel inspired to participate for 12 hours or maybe 24 hours. Um, if you participated for 24 hours and did something that you never have done before, that's a win. It's setting you up for something bigger that will come later on in your life. So water is our focus today. Um, in history, fasting was a huge healing modality. So before pharmacopoeia and all these crazy wild stuff showed up in our modern healthcare system around the turn of the century and even before, 
the petrochemical pharmaceutical industry that now governs almost every aspect of our lives, there were other innate forms of healing, like fasting. So in history, if we look back in, in literature, we can always see evidence of really powerful leaders and, and even you know, the stories in the Bible that we're going to talk about of, of you know, these people who had nothing and God came to them and told them to fast to prepare them to become the leader or the ruler of the city. All right. So in history, fasting plays a very integral and important role. In the Bible, it's one of the, the, the continual themes that is, that is spoken of more than almost any other theme in the Bible. Love, of course, is the word that's used the most in the Bible. Fasting is not that far behind it. Fasting is used over and over and over again. And of course, we talked about that for religion. And certain cultures in today are using fasting and have uh, never stopped using fasting. Okay. There's now a clinic, I saw it now, there's, there's a clinic in Russia that all they do is fast patients. They have one of the most successful cure rates, not symptomatology relief rates, cure rates for the wildest diseases and syndromes on our planet, and they fast their patients. You pay to go to a resort and be monitored by some of the best doctors in the world to eat nothing <laughs> and drink water. All right? There's a lot of spiritual components. There's a lot of journaling, self-help in, included in that. But the bottom of the line is it's fasting. They're not eating. Okay? We know that fasting is one of the most powerful modalities that you can teach yourself to do. So powerful that your body is designed to fast. It's not something that, oh, I think maybe I'll do a fast. No, every cell in your body is designed to fast. And your DNA wants you to fast. For reasons that I'm going to show you, you're designed to fast. Not, and we've gone away from this. Now, if we go back a couple of hundred years, we had a problem because if we didn't get out and collect the food or grow the food or shoot the buffalo, we didn't what? Eat. We didn't eat. And sometimes we wouldn't eat for months. Like I'm not even making this up. Borderline starvation. But yet we persevered for 40, 50,000 years on this planet living like that. Isn't that just mind shattering? <laughs> I always like to talk about the Native Americans, you know, the, the Indians, or, who are native to our area. I mean, these people were so resilient. There's not many berries that were grown around here other than juniper berries and maybe some different types of uh, blueberries and huckleberries and things like that. But, you know, I was talking to someone who studied Native American tribes in our area, and he said, you know, when the springtime, or, or when the berries grow in like August, right, July and August, they would send a crew to hike over the mountain pass to bring bushels of berries back. Now, they wouldn't last very long because they might hike back the bushels of berries and they might have a week to eat them or less. So they would gorge and feast on these berries, but then they'd be done, that's it. But you get berries for a couple weeks out of the year, maybe if you're lucky. And the rest of the time, we have some grains and we have some natural uh, vegetables that we're growing here. But the rest of the time, you're living on venison, elk, and whatever else, rabbit, whatever else showed up, okay? And it changed the way that your body or their bodies were working. So throughout history, it's, it's critical that we understand that it's built in our DNA. We're designed to fast. We're not designed to always eat. It's just rather interesting because the way that we can really dissect this whole thing. There's something magical that happens, and I'll touch on it with your handouts when we go over our handouts. When you stop eating for a period of time, your body starts running on fat. It switches the way that the cells are receiving and, and using energy from sugar and carbohydrates to fat. Cells in our body get two forms of energy that they can run off of. They can run off of sugars or they can run on fats. The brain, on the other hand, gets one source of fuel and that is sugars. So the brain has to run on sugars, but if you're not eating any sugars, then your body has to go inside to the cells and it has to turn fat into a form of sugar so that the brain can function. It's called a ketone. You guys have heard of ketogenic diet? That's what's happening. You're training your body to run on fat to produce, a, think of it as a form of sugar so that your brain can then use it for fuel. And trust me when I say this, the brain loves to use that stuff. If you've ever had a day where you're foggy, it's probably because, partially maybe, um, because you have inflammation in your brain. 
when your body and your cells run on sugar for a prolonged period of time, they spin off massive free radicals and they create inflammation in the cells that are consuming it. All right, we talked about this on Tuesday, nutrition for athletes. When we're an athlete, we, want, we go through inflammatory states because we're building muscle, we're challenging our muscle. But in the process of feeding the cells sugar, free radicals are produced. And the more free radicals that are produced in the body, the faster we age and the faster our tissues start to break down. When your body runs on fat, free radicals get lowered because the process of burning fat is like stove in the, the stove or the fireplace and opening up the damper so all the stuff goes out. It burns clean. Running on sugar is like forgetting to open the damper and putting a bunch of logs into the fireplace. Eventually it gets smoky in there and it gets toxic in the cell and the cell gets sick. So when we don't train our body or show our body how to run on fat for a period of time, eventually it gets sick, just like my analogy with the fireplace. Does everyone understand where I'm going with this? Perfect. What happens when you starve your body from food? Or I say, no, I don't like the word starve. When you void your body from food, the body has to start running off its own juices. Okay? Now, you can last several months without eating. The longest fast on record, the longest fast on record for someone who willingly went through this process was almost an entire year. Went an entire year on just water. It lost like 190 pounds. You can go on the internet and read about this guy's stories from over in Europe, Scotland, as a matter of fact, okay? I met a gentleman at a, uh, at a detox seminar. He was on day 128. Lost 150 pounds. He went a little bit longer after that. So the first thing I want you to understand is you do not need to eat to live. Eventually, you will have to feed the body and nourish the body. You'll make it for a very long time. Okay? So the first thing that always comes up is, oh my gosh, I can't go two, three days without eating. And I, I guarantee you, I look at someone and go, you absolutely can. You just don't know that you can because your body is thinking that your body's thinking that it wants sugar. It's just running out of sugar and it's going into a hangry mode. Who's ever been hangry? Yeah. <clears throat> Look out, right? Look out. After you stop consuming food, your body has to run on its own juices. Now, you guys are smart. If your body's going to start running on its own juices, is it going to go after the really strong, healthy cells or is it going to go after the cells that are a little bit weaker? Think of the Sahara, okay? There's a lion, and the lion's watching and waiting, this whole herd of antelope. It's waiting. Who's he gonna, who's he gonna go after? The weak, one. the weak one, every single time, because he's gonna have to use less energy. And that lion maybe hasn't eaten for how long? Weeks. Sometimes when they're, they're feeding their kids, months a lion will go without eating. They'll just shrivel down to almost nothing. And they need to then go out and they need to take down that weak antelope to conserve energy because they don't have much left. Same thing's true in your body. When you void your body from eating food and you go through this whole cycle where your body uses up all the glu glycogen and the glucagon so there's no more sugar reserves, it goes right after fat burning. The liver dumps a whole bunch of fat, spikes you up, gets you feeling, oh my gosh, where did I get all this energy from? Because your body switched from sugar burning to fat burning and then your body says, okay, once we used up everything, where are the weak guys at? Okay? Are cancer cells weaker or stronger than healthy human cells? They're weaker. They have to run on sugar. They can't run on any other food source except sugar. They're weaker. Every other healthy cell in your body except for your brain, which your brain is very powerful, all the other cells in your body, they can run on two different fuel sources. They're so adaptable. I'm telling you, it's built into your DNA that we should be fasting for periods of time. Agreed? So when your body goes after the weak cells, there's a fancy word for that called autophagy. It means your body is consuming weakened cells. We've seen, you just look at, look at some of these books, we've seen tumors shrink down to nothing and wither away. We've seen people cure themselves from endometriosis, from cystic fibrosis, every disease you can think of. We've seen this clinically, that, that, that fasting can power the body to go after through autophagy and attack weakened cells. It's, it's miraculous the way your body was designed, okay? A whole bunch of really smart doctors, okay? They took a dog, 
and they said, give us the weakest dog out there. Let's see what happens when we starve this thing. Okay, kind of sad. But they wanted to starve this thing. They want to see how long this really sick, just this brittle, frail dog would make it if they starved it. Day one, okay, crazy, bouncing off the walls. Day two, really weak, really weak. Day three, day four, day five, really weak. Something started happening around day 10. This dog started getting up, started walking around. Started acting like a dog again. And then they're going, this is interesting. Watch this dog. Don't feed it. Just give it water. Got crazier and crazier. Next thing you know, this dog's pawing at the cage. He's jumping around. He's doing backflips. This dog is getting healthier and healthier and healthier. The longer they fast it, they said, let's just try and kill this thing. They couldn't even get this thing to die. It just kept him getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. It went on for months. This dog turned into this incredible, healthy dog, vibrant dog because they stopped feeding it. So what I'm trying to tell you is to feed your sickness is to feed your disease. I'm sorry. To feed someone when they're sick is to feed their sickness. To feed someone when they're sick is to feed their sickness. What's the first thing we do when our kids get sick? I don't know, honey. What can we do? Make you feel better. Yeah. Make you feel better. I mean, here, have some ginger ale, have some toast. I mean, you've got to get something in your system. My brother was up at Emmanuel Burn Center for 21 days. They told him, they said, all right, you will eat this much food and these calories and these amounts every single day, or else we're going to shove a feeding tube down your throat. I mean, I understand fasting, and I was appalled by that. I was like, we, if he's hungry, let him eat. If he's not, his body's healing. Let his body heal the way innate designed his body to heal. So there's this conflict with what people are telling us, and the smart doctors are telling us, you have to eat. That's why in the United States, it's, you know, it's uncouth to fast a child. I mean, can you imagine? We have a sick child, we're not going to feed the child. You go to jail, they'd lock you up. But in other countries, it's not only... It's not only something that they consider first, but, I mean, it's powerful, and they understand that. Anyone ever had a sick dog or cat? How long did the food sit in the oh, pan well, for? Until they felt better. Yeah. Day, two days, three days. Take your dog to the vet. Oh, my gosh, you know, my vet, my dog's not doing good. They instantly put them on fluids, monitor them. The next day, they're putting food, and they're, they're pumping the dog full of food. I mean, it's just, it's just completely opposite from what our bodies told us we needed. Now, I'm not telling everyone in this room that you need to go on a fast. If you need some medical supervision, yes, you need to do that. But I want you to understand how society and the medical mafia maybe has skewed our perception of natural innate healing. Rather interesting. Okay? The next thing that comes up is the social aspect of eating is very much a part and ingrained in our lives. I have this uh, funny picture. I should have brought it. Um, my aunt, Aunt Corinne, texts it to me. It's this Italian woman sitting at the head of the table like this, like, like a boss, and, and she says, let me go get you some snacks out. And then you flip to the next one, and the whole table is covered in like this 19-course dinner. So when I go visit my grandparents back east, I get in at like 11, you know, flying west coast to east, could get in late. I get in like 11 o'clock, and you know, my nana and papa, we get there, and there's this, the whole table's covered in food. You get some snacks before you go to bed. You know, so there's a social aspect with this eating thing, and it's very much ingrained within us. So the social aspect of eating is valuable. It's important. I come from an Italian family. I mean, eating, we start talking about lunch while we're eating breakfast, and then dinner while we're eating lunch, and then breakfast when we finish dinner. It just never ends. Not because you go without a meal for more than a few hours. Food is love. Food is love. Right. So, so that's, that's exactly where we're going with this. Food is love. So if you really want to promote healing inside the body, control your glucose and insulin. If you can control your glucose and insulin, you can be really, really healthy. And scientists now know that if you can control your glucose and insulin for long term, you're going to live longer. Directly related on a, on a chart. As insulin... So insulin and glucose, as they come down to that point, person lives longer. It's amazing. So I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about how you can test for this stuff. We're not going to get into the details, um, but for those of you who are fasting next week, um, you'll all know that you might want to monitor your glucose levels. It would be a valuable thing to do. Okay? All right. Everyone still with me? So let's talk about some fears. So 
What are some fears that come up with fasting? Let's just come on. Let's just talk about them. No coffee. No coffee. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> That's no thick. energy. No energy. Yeah. Feeling bad. Feeling bad. Mood. Mood. Headaches. Headaches. Mm -hmm. Getting hungry. And, yeah. And, you know, don't There's a million fears associated with this. So. Of course, maybe we've never fasted before. Maybe we don't know what it's like to be hungry. So being hungry is not merely an absence of food in your stomach. So think about that. So now that we talked about some fears, you feeling hungry or you feeling like you want coffee or you feeling like you want to go out and have a beer, it's not because it's not in your stomach. It's because something else is driving it. So identifying and just letting go of some of those fears and empowering yourself to say, I want to do this for me or I want to do this for someone else, we'll talk about that in a minute, is what will drive you to go through the fast. And it's really powerful. And the key is, is that if you start to fast and you have to break your fast, you still won. It's a victory. If you normally eat two to five times a day and you went one day without eating and you wanted to go two but that you, you had to break the fast you still won you did something amazing and then you have a decision okay do I want to now get back on and keep going so if you start getting a really bad headache during the fast and you think that it's from caffeine have a little sip of black coffee don't beat yourself up and keep going it's not the end of the world. I mean, when I, I, I did a fast and, and I allowed myself to have, you know, like a little six ounce glass of just straight black coffee in the morning um, because I was fearful that I was just going to have this terrible experience if I didn't. Now, it's okay because I identified that and I learned from it, right? So letting go of those fears. Society tells us that I call this the Reader's Digest analogy. Whatever Reader's Digest is hot on right now, wait a little bit and they'll be hot on the exact opposite thing in a year or four or five years. Agreed? Yeah. So whatever they're hot on, look the other direction. And this is true with everything. Whatever everyone's hot on, look the other direction and sometimes you'll find the solution. <laughs> I heard on the radio this morning, I want to make this real life to you. I'm driving over to the office. I was right there getting ready to turn in. There's um, six or eight cases of whooping cough in either Madras or Culver. Redmond. 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 Okay. And it's just like, it's just like uh, the, the woman's telling the story and she says, every child who came down with whooping cough is fully vaccinated. Yet we believe that if they weren't fully vaccinated, that it would be worse. They go, how do you know that, man? I mean, they were all vaccinated. Are there any unvaccinated kids that got whooping cough? People, people do get whooping cough all the time. And yeah, it can be a very serious thing. But I'm just like, how do you know? Okay? I mean, how do you know? I just think, okay, I always look the other way and I go, how do you know? Let's talk about this, okay? Society tells us that small meals throughout the day will keep your glucose levels stable and your insulin levels stable and will do you better for longevity. Who knows this and has heard that before? We've all heard that before. I'm telling you, wrong. I'm telling you, look the other direction. Eat less often. Don't eat less food. All right? All of science that is, that is hot on this fasting topic is telling us, don't eat less food, eat less often. Okay? Why? Because if you want to live longer and be healthier and control your inflammation and your longevity, you need to control your glucose and your insulin. We don't want it planing up here forever because you're creating inflammation, you're gonna crash. Some inflammation drives all disease. So we now, now, these guys that I'm studying under and these guys that you'll, and ladies that you'll be studying under if you get it, if you're interested in, in anything that I'm telling you, they're telling you don't eat, don't eat less, eat less often. Two meals a day, one meal a day. Manage your glucose, manage your insulin and you'll live longer. Okay? And that's that whole intermittent fasting story that we're not going to talk about. So, science tells us that about 8 o'clock in the morning, our body does something magical. It actually starts at about 4 o'clock. It's called the dawn effect. Okay? What happens is your body gets you ready to wake up and start your day. Okay? Most people are not hungry for breakfast. Does anyone ever wake up raging hungry every single day? What do people tell us? What's the most important meal of the day? Breakfast. Wrong. 
100% wrong because if you understand the physiology of the body and how the cells are designed to use energy, you'll know it's wrong. The worst thing you can do for your health is to eat when you're not hungry. It takes a massive amount of energy to break down food. Eat less often, you'll conserve energy, you'll use more of your energy for healing and daily function and cognitive function and you won't have this chronic fatigue that most people have or are walking around with. Around four o'clock in the morning, your body gets you ready. Your brain starts talking and sending out hormones to other cells in your body, and you get a glucose spike in the morning. It's a natural glucose spike, part of maybe your circadian rhythm, to get you amped up and ready for the day. You also get a blast of some cortisol, the stress hormone. You get a sympathetic response. Sympathetic gets you in that state where, man, I'm ready to rock and roll. The same thing that you get when you're running from a dog that's going to bite you. You get a little taste of that. You get some epinephrine, some norepinephrine, and your body gets ready for the day. Most people aren't hungry in the morning because they got that little boost. All right, And, it, and it, it's around that 7 to 8 o'clock window. Don't eat because you're, someone tells you to eat. Eat because you're hungry. Fair? I just want to add that in because it kind of clears up some confusion for people. All right? I start my day with a little bit of fat in my, actually sometimes a lot of fat in my coffee. I know, a lot, I shouldn't have said a little. A lot, a lot of fat in my coffee in the morning and then I don't eat till, you know, noon 30. And I'm, I'm like, man, I feel so good since I stopped eating breakfast, it's, it's nuts. And I'll have a, a nice high fat lunch, you know, very low carbs except vegetables and then I don't eat till 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. And I do the same thing at night and then I go through this intermittent fasting throughout my day. And it's just, it's insane. I'll teach you about that in an in intermittent fasting class. Not today. Who should fast and who should not fast? Well, if you're really sick, you should fast. You should just fast under some supervision. <laughs> Fair? So anything I talk about from now on moving forward, I'm not telling you to do it because I'm your doctor. I'm giving you some tips, but proceed with caution. If you're going to do this and you need some help, ask for some help. Um, I'm just telling you right now that if you're healthy, you're not going to have a problem at all fasting. Fair? If you have some challenges, if you're on medications, if you have some insulin and glucose issues already, maybe you shouldn't fast until you talk to someone about it. Okay? Or if you are going to still attempt to do it on your own will, okay, you should learn how to monitor your blood glucose and monitor it throughout the fast. Agreed? Because when we start having people with medications and, you know, it, it can get really interesting really quick and it ne there needs to be some specialized supervision. All right. Remember what I said, nothing harnesses the innate human healing potentials and powers quite like not eating food. And I, gosh, I really mean that. Um, if you're a remotely or generally healthy person, you're fine. Your body can live for a very long time on its own juice. Agreed? We talked about autophagy. Now, let's get into it. So here's my detox class in a nutshell. And I'm not going to go through this. I'm just going to get right to the fasting part. Remember, we teach these classes every last Thursday of the month. You're just here for that. That's why we have to teach us forever, every Thursday month, Thursday, last Thursday of the month. Healing comes from within. Everyone agree? There's no pill or surgery that can heal you. Your body does it all. Even if you get a nasty bacterial infection, you take a what? Antibiotic. Antibiotic. Deanna's awake. And, thank you. <laughs> and the antibiotic upregulates your own natural immunity. And trust me when I say this, it's your body that does the healing, not the antibiotic. What it does is it gets your cells and it gets your body ready by giving a little bit of a boost of some troops. Hey, we need some help over here. You throw in some, you know, call for backup, you might say. The backup shows up, down regulates the infection just enough to give your immune system a chance to get in there and really start kicking you know what. That's what happens when you take an antibiotic. It's not the pill that's doing it. It's your own human, human innate system, okay? Here's a three-legged stool for health within. We have DNA over here. You guys have been to a lot of my classes. How much of your health is determined by your DNA? About 5%. So right now, everyone who thinks that your DNA is driving who you are today, divorce it from your mind because I didn't make this up. This is coming from the same people that 
coded the Human Genome Project. 5%. That means 5% of cancers are determined by your DNA. Predetermined. Now, that's not entirely true. And now I'm going to back up and tell you why it's not entirely true. Because there's something called... Epigenetics. The word epi means above. So this is a whole new category of science that has completely taken over all of, all of genetics. It's called epigenetics because when we finally mapped the entire human genome, it was supposed to cure cancer, right? Guess what happened? We said, holy smokes, we just spent 15 years and millions and billions of dollars coding the human DNA, which it's very beneficial, by the way. But we just found out that we can't cure cancer because there's something else driving this. So whatever is driving, uh, whatever is driving the gene is where we need to focus. That's epigenetics. Okay. Here's what controls your DNA: physical, chemical, and emotional health. Physical, chemical, and emotional health health drive epigenetics, which drives DNA. Okay. And over here, ancient healing strategies. So under the ancient healing strategies, we focus on the gut microbiome. The gut is the what brain? Second. The second brain. All right, this is just mind-blowing stuff that we now know. The gut is the second brain. So physical traumas, of course, chiropractic is the best modality for removing neurological stress from the system, which does every time you get adjusted and you get a subluxation removed, it changes epigenetics. Clinically, we know this. We see this in our studies. So this is not only important for your chiropractic adjustment, not for just your physical ailments, but every single cell tissue and organ in your body to drive it closer to healing. C is the chemical, physical and chemical. How do we clean out our body? We detox it. We have the best detox program on planet Earth, I believe. But we're not talking about that tonight. Emotional, you guys know self-help, your beliefs, your daily practices, neurofeedback, right ladies? programming the brain to work the way it was designed to, prayer, meditation, yoga, etc. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about this side, ancient healing strategies, gut microbiome, okay? Fasting and diet variation. We're going to come back to fasting, diet variation. How many times in history did we go on and on and on just gorging and gorging and gorging and eating whatever we wanted whenever we wanted? Just recently, like really recently. Okay? If you guys need to stand up and move for a minute, that's fine. I won't be, I won't be upset. So just recently, could we have whatever we wanted from CE Lovejoy's? In an instant, I can have whatever I want for lunch. Literally anything. Sky's the limit. I could eat a tub of ice cream for lunch, or I could eat an avocado for lunch, or I could eat berries and nuts. Whatever. And berries and nuts aren't even in season, right? Yeah. It's just mind-blowing. So diet variation, ketogenic diet, paleo diet, whatever. But we're not talking about that tonight. We're talking about fasting. I could go on for months about this. Fasting, there's, there's lots of different types of fasting. There's two major ones that I teach people. Intermittent fasting means you eat within a window and then you don't eat anymore for the day. Okay. The best window is between four and six hours a day. You eat one or two meals within four to six hours and then you don't eat for the rest of the day. Intermittent fasting, it does magic to your system. It heals your body. You actually feel stronger. You can actually put on muscle when you're eating like this. I, I'll teach you why. Intermittent fasting, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about block fasting. Block fasting means you're not eating for a period of time. Okay? The fast that I'm doing next week, and some of you might participate in, is a five-day fast. It's a five-day water fast. Why is it five days? It's five days because, generally speaking, day one, day two, and day three can be kind of hard. All right? And most people, if they're going to stop, when are they going to stop? Day, one, day, three. Three. day two or day three. Yeah. Because anyone can make it a day. I mean anyone. Like Oliver could make it a day. <laughs> he would be very upset and cranky. He could make it a day. So you can make it a day. Not everyone wants to make it two days. And after two days, sometimes you get some of those doubts and fears start coming back into you. And, oh my gosh, I have a, a lunch meeting scheduled or, or, or whatever. Or I'm at the airport and all this food and you just kind of lose it. Two days and three days are hard. But if you make it three days, you won't stop. Because I'll tell you right now, day four and day five is generally where the magic happens. 
Okay? So if you can get to that three day, you just keep pushing because you know you're so close. You can taste it. You can see the end in sight. You've already got it planned out in your head. Because if you're not fat adapted going into the fast, which I recommend people are, but if you're not, you start fat adapting on day two and day three. You've used up all the carbs and sugars. And I told you earlier, magic happens when your body runs on fat. So your body starts going after its own juices on day two and day three. Cool? And something really magical happens on day five. I'll show you when we get to our handout. Okay? Now, <laughs> if, um, if anyone wants to fast with us, and I thought about whether or not we were going to do this, but I'll just tell you, make an intention, okay? And decide for yourself if you're going to fast for yourself, if you're going to fast for your health, if you're going to fast for spirituality reasons, which we'll, we'll touch on, if you're going to fast for someone else, and now we should stop right there. So why the heck would you fast for someone else? Is that just kind of like, wait, I, I thought we were fasting for ourselves to get healthy. You are. You're going to reset your immune system. Okay? Um, can anyone think of a reason why you'd fast for someone else? Example. Ma yeah, maybe. To pray for the spirit. Yes. It's a spiritual connectivity component. Um, we learned that from the Bible. Okay? And I thought that this was interesting. I want to read this to you. So this does come from the Bible. If, if your beliefs are congruent with mine, great. If they're not, just listen because it's rather interesting. The secret to fasting from, uh, from the book of Matthew. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward from others. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father, who, is, who in your world is deep within your secret. And your Father who sees in his secret will reward you gratefully. Um, some people fast and they don't tell others that they're fasting. Because they're fasting for someone else, or they're fasting for spirituality purposes. So the first thing that I wanted to do when I learned about fasting was, I wanted people to know. You know, I'm like, because I kind of wanted some recognition. Like, you went five days without fasting last week. Ugh. I got adjusted twice. You were, you hadn't eaten in five days, and I'm like, yeah. You know, I wanted people to think that that was so cool because it, like, it kind of is, right? But then I read this. Uh, my friend Shanda shared that with me, and I was like, wow, interesting. How strong would you have to be? to be fasting and not share with anyone and all the struggles and the fears that you go through because no one else knows that you're doing that and how congruent and how that spirituality component can then just get amplified to this whole new realm. It's just mind-blowing to me. I wanted to share that with you because the spirituality component of fasting is, is something that I didn't... I fasted for my own health last time uh, and this time I'm going to be fasting for different reasons. So, intentions. So if you're going to be fasting... Jot down on a card or write down when you're prayer, in prayer or in journal why you're fasting and really connect with the why on that. And you'll be connecting back to that throughout your fast. And when the fears come up, when you have your intention, you'll cruise. If you're fasting for someone else and you feel weak, but they're weak and you're fasting for them, you'll get it. You'll push through. If you're fasting for spirituality or you're fasting for an answer or to connect with the higher power and you haven't received what you're looking for or the message yet, you'll keep going because you, if you break, you disrupt that connection. Okay? Um, also, if you're fasting for your health, if your intention is to repair my body, to restore my gut, autophagy, you might just have that push to keep going because that day four and five is generally a magical day. Okay? Now we get to talk about why fasting and what this is going to do for us. And some of this I already touched on. So up here, con control your glucose and insulin. You control your longevity for life. 
most people generally want to live longer, right? And sometimes when people are in hospice care and they take them off the feeding apparatus, you're in hospice. Sometimes does it just keep going on after the feeding stops and and you just it's as a nurse I mean you know, we, are, we had okay we go without water this long without food this long to kind of have a general expectation and there were some people that just lived way longer yeah. than ever expected you know so there was that okay is their bodies clearing some stuff or is it they have some unfinished work to do yeah yep I'm so glad I, I actually stopped on that because that's just like really because powerful. For many people, it's a spiritual thing. They have reasons they're still hanging on. Or family thing. They have to say goodbye. And I can only think, and I can't know this, but I can only think that in that situation, when, when the feeding stops or the water <clears throat> stops, that might give them the moment because of the fast to clear, to forgive, to connect and sometimes to heal so that's a goosebump moment right there thank you increase mental acuity decrease brain fog yes there have been lots of amazing studies on depression and what happens when clinically depressed people go on a fast of course remember there's different types of fasts. there's dry fasts i mean i know a guy who dry fasted for five days no water easy the story that he told me okay he talked about running on your own juice weight loss obviously but this one weight gain i know right now you're thinking oh, how could fasting promote weight gain i'm going to tell you here in just a minute um the hodge twins these guys are like super vulgar like if, if you don't mind foul language you could watch their youtube videos but the hodge twins they're like these guys are like 21 years old they started fasting and they call it their, they biohacked their system because they met some really intelligent doctors and they started fasting. They're, they're bodybuilders and they fast all the time and they are always reaching new levels and they're doing everything natural and they're fasting and they're putting on more muscle. I'll show you in a moment. When you fast, you increase your testosterone. You increase human growth hormone and you increase stem cells. Now this is almost, I mean, we can't even do that with medication barely. It's the perfect example of how your body is the perfect pharmacy for everything that you need at every single instant of your life. When you start fasting and you get to that point where your body's going, hmm, haven't eaten in about five or six days, your body gives you a testosterone spike. What's testosterone do? It's yeah, it's a hormone. What do we know about testosterone? Sense of well-being. Strength, well-being. Good. Prostate cancer thrives on it. True. Maybe there's an imbalance there. True, yeah. When you increase your testosterone, it gives you strength, endurance. If you haven't eaten in a while, do you think it's a good idea if you got to get out and spear a buffalo that you maybe have a little increased strength and endurance? Body produces more testosterone for you. Thank you very much for these Hodge twins. Human growth hormone, how about that? Natural production and spike of human growth hormone happens at day five. So I'll show you when we go over our notes. If you're going to exercise on a five-day fast, don't do it until day five. You're conserving energy because you're using energy to heal, not to exercise. And you can go out for a light jog or a little bit of exercise because you get this spike. Stem cells. Stem cells spike on day five too. That's power. And that's nuts. And that's crazy. And the Hodge twins know this and they teach people about this. Biohack as we call it. Re repair your gut. Okay, uh, Victor Longo, um, one of the forefront leaders in fasting, says that a five-day water fast can almost completely reset your entire immune system. That's nuts. Okay, repair your gut, decrease inflammation. So back to repair your gut, most people have leaky gut because of our diet. If you stop eating food, the gut can heal. If you keep eating food, the gut can't heal. That's why leaky gut, they put people on bone broth fasts where they're stopping the dig harsh digestion of things and the, then the, the leaky gut heals back together. So you can repair your gut. I know people who have been sensitive to 
15, 20 different foods. I've seen them fast. I've seen their test reports before the fast. I've seen them do a five-day fast, wait a little bit, introduce some stuff back, repair their gut, give them some good probiotics. A couple weeks later, do the same test, no sensitivities to food. Why? Healed their gut. We know that the gut is the what brain? Second. Second brain. So we need to make sure our guts are healthy and repaired. Remember, this happened naturally when we ran out of food in history. Decreases inflammation. Um, you're not running on sugar. You're not creating inflammatory membrane around the cells. So you decrease inflammation. Um, inflammation is not a really good thing to have floating around in your body all the time. Rapid healing. We call that autophagy. Remember? Rapid healing. Epigenetics. We already talked about that. Reset your hormones. How do we reset our hormones? I think I should probably pause right there and show you how. So when the cells are inflamed, which most people have tons of inflamed cells, we have these little receptor sites on the cell membrane that grabs something like a thyroid hormone and it transfers it into the cell. It's like a key unlocking a door so that you can go in. When the cell becomes inflamed because of our diet and some other things, but our diet, we get this inflammation around the cell. And what do you think that inflammation does to that receptor site? It blunts it and blocks it. And then we have toxins that come in there and they hoard the site and they block it. So, doc, my tests are all normal and I have all these symptoms that are like fibromyalgia or thyroid symptoms and I've been on these thyroid medications forever. It's likely that there's an inflammation issue in the body and it's likely that there's some chemical toxicity in the body blocking those receptor sites. So massive for resetting hormones. Cool? Everyone get all that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. How are we doing? Is everyone interested in fasting a little bit? Oh, yeah. yeah, I think so too. So let's go to the handout. Could I have a handout? Thanks, Dee. All right, flip to the second page. And let's review some of this so that you can feel built up like you have something to leave here with on paper. Remember, there's lots of types of fasts, okay? I'm going to promote that we do a water fast or you do a water fast. If the water fast scares you or intimidates you, start with a bone broth fast. That's, that's awesome. That's a huge win. If that scares you, start with a whey water fast. And people who really understand fasting, who, who fast their patients, depending on what's going on with the patient's body, they'll guide them into one of those specific fasts. Okay? Um, water's best. And eventually, everyone always goes to water because it's where the magic does happen. Okay? Here's some things to consider. Now, I've invited some of you to do this five day fast with me. Um, don't feel like you have to. If you're scared and you want to try a day, do it. Totally. Do it. You can do it. All right? If you feel like you want to keep going, do it. Keep going. Um, I have on here when the fast is going to start. And the reason I put start and end times on the front page, when we, we'll get to the front page, but the reason I did that is because I'm going to be doing Facebook Live videos every single day. So um, I, I participated in a worldwide fast, and the leader of the worldwide fast did this, and it really it made it work for me. Because when I was getting home from the office, I was, you know, when you get home from the day, what do you do? Eat. You eat. But at the end of the day, I'd come home and I'd watch the video. And it kept me going and it kept me on track because I'll go over every single day what to expect, what's probably going on with your system, some challenges and how to overcome them. It'll be 10 to 20 minutes Facebook Live. So every single day that I'm fasting, if you're fasting with me, you can follow along and we can have this dialogue together all five of those days. I'll teach you how to, what you're going to be expecting and I'm going to most importantly, if you make it the five days, which some of you will, I'll teach you how to come off the fast in a way that will keep your body running the way you want it to. And that's extremely critical. So number one on this sheet, innate intelligence. Innate intelligence will take over. Okay. Most questions that come up with fasting are, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out right now. This is happening or this is showing up. I'm, I have a headache. 
Doc, I mean, I'm fine with not being with being hungry, but I have a headache. Okay, cool. Well, what should I do? Nothing. Your body's dealing with something. Okay, it'll go away eventually. Okay. No, going into this, innate intelligence will take control, and it will lead your body and guide your body exactly where your body needs to go. Number two, thirst. People always say, how much water should I drink? I say, look, drink when you're thirsty. I don't want you drinking six gallons of water a day. No, that's actually going to tax and stress your kidneys more. Drink when you're thirsty. Doc, I'm not thirsty. Cool, don't drink. Doc, I cannot stop drinking. Cool, keep drinking. Listen to your body. Innate intelligence, listen to your body. Got it? Um, one of the things that we will do is don't drink tap water during a fast because it has chemicals in it and it has chlorine in it. So um, thanks for coming, guys. Uh, so if you don't have access to good spring water, um, buy reverse osmosis water, or if you have a filter in your house, drink that water only. Cool? Um, one of the things I tell people is warm water works best because, and I'm going to get to this next, the next bullet point there is most people get cold when they fast. Body temperature lowers. Because you're not working to digest all this stuff. So you will probably drop a little bit in temperature. Don't freak out. Innate intelligence knows what it's doing. All right? That might mean that it might be 75 degrees out and everyone's outside in t t-shirt and you're going, gosh, sweatshirt. It might mean that you have to sleep in sweatpants. I don't know. I promise you, most of the time, you're going to sleep like a rock when you're fasting. I had the best night's sleep I think I've had in years when I was fasting. I, hadn't, I, I just needed to conserve energy. I didn't want to come home, play with the daughter a little bit. I wasn't eating. Eating takes time. I would just kind of watch my video, pray, journal a little bit, and I'd be in bed by like 8.30, 9 o'clock. And I would like not wake up. Okay? So, a little bit of uh, salt. Natural sea salt, Himalayan sea salt in your water is a good thing to balance some of the electrolytes. That always brings up another concern. Doc, should I take my vitamins? Should I be drinking electrolyte water? No, no. Because remember, your body's running on its own juice. Your body has an innate ability to take whatever it needs from your body. You have everything you need inside of your body. Your kidneys, your nephrotic system, everything will balance your electrolytes and everything will balance to that position that it needs to be, and you'll find that sweet spot and you'll roll with it. Okay? Sometimes people get a little lightheaded when they start the fast. I say just add some electrolytes, some sea salt into your warm water. People generally like warm water better because they get cold. It's easier to fast in the summertime than the winter because the sun, and the sun gives us energy. So if you have one of those moments, just go outside and sit in the sun, it'll change everything for you. Okay? Number four, tongue changes and breath changes. When you stop eating, your gut microbiome is going to heal, which means all the bad bacteria are going to die because the bad bacteria live on all the junk that we put in our body. The good bacteria are innately there and they're going to start to flourish. When the bad guys start to die, they can produce some weird smells, right? Mostly in the breath and in the mouth. Duck, I have terrible breath. Can I chew gum? No, don't chew gum. The reason you don't want to chew gum is because it stimulates digestion and has other stuff in it. Remember, we want that stuff out of us. So, what can I do? Just drink, gargle some salt water, swish around some salt water, brush your teeth. Doc, should I use toothpaste? No, you should not use toothpaste when you're doing a water fast because it's going to stimulate digestion. Even if it's the good stuff, it's going to stimulate digestion. Brush your teeth, just don't use anything. Let your good bacteria do their job. Here's what's going to happen. Your mouth's going to feel a little weird on the first day. Then all of a sudden, by the end of the fast, you're going to go, my teeth are perfectly clean. <coughs> my teeth are perfectly clean. You're going to get this smooth feeling in your mouth. If you're having problems with your tongue, you can wait a couple days and you can do a tongue scrape. Or maybe like day one, you can do, you guys can, you ever know what a tongue scrape is? Mm -hmm. Just scrape your tongue, okay? There's a progression that happens sometimes with tongue changes, okay? I have it written here. It'll start, it'll go to white first. Everyone's tongue generally will start turning white. So look at your tongue. Some people take pictures of their tongue every day. Take pictures of the whites of your eyes in the mirror every day because you will see your body changing and healing. It's amazing. No one has ever shown you this before. It's amazing. It's your own body healing. 
It'll go from white to yellow, and sometimes your tongue will turn green. If it starts turning green, tongue scrape. Okay? That's bacteria and yeast and stuff dying in your mouth. All right? The most toxic people, their tongue will turn black and get furry. Nobody wants to take credit for a furry black tongue. So maybe you want to take a picture and keep it to yourself. All right? Tongue scrape. <laughs> tongue scrape if you need to. I, didn't, I haven't done a tongue scrape with my fasts. Bowel <laughs> movements. Doc, am I going to poo? You might poo once. The most toxic people will poop more. But you're not eating, so you're not pooping. Agreed? If you're pooping still on day three and day four, that means your lower bowels are eliminating and cleansing stuff that's probably been stored up there for a really long time. Expect one poo to come on around day one or day two. I didn't have a bowel movement until day three last time. I was like kind of getting nervous. I'm like, man, what the heck is going on? But it came on day three. It was just this little tiny poo. Not much. All right. Do you want to know about my poo? You want to know about my poo? Yummy. Talk dirty to me. Um, hunger. Now, here's the trick. And I always tell people, the trick is, if you want to rock through a five-day fast, with it's never easy. Please understand that. With more ease, get into ketosis first, which means get your body burning fat first. So stop eating carbs and sugars in advance so that you go through your sugar withdrawals before you start the fast. It makes day two and three a lot easier. Generally, the people who have the hardest time and break the fast are people who haven't fat adapted. Remember, because their body's not running on their own juice yet. So if you're thinking about going into this and you want to try it, make a decision today if you want to try it. Stop eating all carbs and all sugars like today. So by the time the weekend rolls around, you've, you're going to go through some crazy stuff this weekend. Okay. The last meal, so on Monday night, is going to be a very high fat meal. I'm going to have avocados. I'm going to have some really good natural cottage cheese. Um, I'll probably have some soft vegetables. I'm going to have tons of coconut oil. I'm going to have plenty of ghee. I'll cook my vegetables in tons of ghee, if you guys don't know what ghee is, or butter. All right. So I'm going to have a really, really high fat meal. Because that next day, guess what my body's going to run on? And guess when that fat's gone, where it's going to go? After my own juice. So when all that fat gets burned up, my liver is going to dump a whole bunch of fat into the system and my body is going to go, okay, cool, I know what to do with this. Burn it. All right? Did you do like 200 grams or something inside of that? I don't really, I don't oh, really, you just, yeah. You say lots. You're talking like I'm going to have a whole avocado. Okay. I'm going to have some, you know, a yeah. couple spoonfuls of ghee in my vegetables. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to really limit. I'm going to have a small cup of cottage cheese. I'm just going to eat, a bunch. I might have a little bit of protein but I'm probably not going to have a ton of protein on that last meal because I don't really want my body trying to get that out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have soft-cooked vegetables but a whole bunch of fat, coconut oil, ghee, butter, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't, really, I don't really know the numbers. I'm not sure. Yeah. Just, just eat till you're full. Yeah. Right. Let your innate tell you when enough's enough. Okay? Um, here, number seven, I say look at the whites of your eyes. Um, Gosh, I could talk so long about this. But the whites of your eyes, if you see someone who has lots of visible blood vessels in their eyes, they're probably really sick. You, has anyone heard of irology? Mm -hmm. The study of the iris? Well, there's a whole other study called sclerology. It's the study of the whites of your eyes. I have a poster. I'll bring it in sometime. Each one of those veins correlates with a sick organ in your body. It's very accurate. So look at the whites of your eyes. Take pictures of them. Number eight, pain. This is a big one, okay? So, pain. Some of us are going to experience pain when we're on a water fast. Physical pain. I'm talking physical pain. Sometimes the pain gets to be a lot and people have to break the fast. And when they break the fast, the next day the pain goes away. Generally, what's happening is your body is going through autophagy. It's attacking weakened cells. All right? I'll speak from my own personal experiences. <clears throat> I did a three-day water fast, and this knuckle... Nobody's laughing. I'm flicking his little <laughs> This knuckle hurt so bad, I could almost not adjust with my left hand. I mean, like, incredible. It was, like, throbbing. Like, the inside of this knuckle was so painful. I just couldn't figure out what was going on. 
Well, all I can think is that I played basketball and baseball my whole life. I must have stubbed that thing a thousand times. And there was tissue in there, and my body was going after it, and it was cleaning it out. On day four, it went away. When I did my five-day fast, on the day, so I can, <laughs> on the second day, I came home from the office, and my wife was cooking bacon, Oh. And you were there. Oh, I was cooking it. Yeah, you were cooking it. It's like credit. We're credits too. Bacon and what was it? Bacon and, and uh, Brussels sprouts. And that I walked into the house and it literally blew me off my feet. I was just like, and I got a pain right there in my sigmoid colon, and it did not go away until I ate food. It stayed with me the entire fast, and I knew it was happening. I have had digestive problems my entire life, have I not? I knew that my body was working on my colon and it was working and it was working and I had to pray through this. I mean, it wasn't like debilitating because I was working, but it was there and it was mindful that it was there. And I was mindful that autophagy was at work. Okay. <clears throat> it would eventually went away. So what I'm telling you is you might experience some pain in some weird spots. If the pain becomes too much and you can't handle it, break your fast. Just know that's what's happening. Okay. Um, generally speaking, you'll lose one pound a day. That's around the ballpark. One pound a day. Um, fatigue, just know that something happens on day five. We talked about that. You get your stem cell and HGH boost on day five. The fatigue will go away. Okay, no hot tubs, no saunas. <clears throat> your body's going to have a challenging time regulating between temperature. So why would we want our body to regulate temperature? We want our body to regulate healing. So going into the sauna, it's going to be really hot. You're going to come out, it's going to be really cool. It's going to stress the system. So no hot tubs, no sauna. Okay, warm showers are fine. I don't wash my body with soap when I do a fast. It's going to get absorbed into my system. You might have some weird smells on the first day. Trust me, you will not smell after a water fast. You'll be like, holy cow. But you might pass a whole bunch of junk in the beginning. And you'll be like, I reek. I smell insanely awful. I don't want to be around people. That's your lymphatic system dumping. It'll go away. If you fast, it'll go away. Okay? And eventually you'll be like, holy cow. I don't, I don't even smell. Not at all. Okay? Um, exercise. Remember, the primary goal is rest and, and relaxation for healing. Don't exercise. In my videos, I'll tell you that you can do a little walk or exercise. I mean, you can walk, obviously. I mean, I worked full 12 hour days when I was water fasting, um, but I didn't go to the gym. I didn't go for walks outside after work or anything. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. You can try it. You can try it. I didn't. I just was kind of, I just wanted to see. I mean, I, if you're, if you have a, a more, I don't want to say sedentary, but if you're not up all day like I am, I mean, I'm interacting, I'm giving 9,000 hugs a day and 9,000 adjustments. I was toast. I mean, I was out. Like, I couldn't even think about walking my dog. Okay. Um, breaking the fast is critical. If you're doing this with me, I'll teach you how to do it in the videos just to keep this thing going. I recommend that if you're doing this, you get your intention and then you start journaling or praying throughout the fast. And journal. I mean, uh, day two, you know, I felt some pain here. And journal, okay, why would I have pain here? Or why do I have pain in my neck? Okay, there was that car accident that I had when I was 16 years old and I didn't handle it properly. I didn't heal from it properly. Or why does my toenail hurt? Why did my toenail fall off? Trust innate. Trust your body. It's doing what it's designed to do. Journal it. It'll make a lot of sense after the fast. And the last thing here, know your numbers. Okay? I'm not going to go over. Did you mention number 13? Did I, did I just copy? So oh, yeah. Sorry. I skipped over oh, it. <laughs> coffee enemas. Um, <clears throat> if you want to do them and you have coffee enemas, do them for the first three days and then stop. Okay? Just... Yeah, keep it simple. Okay, because in the first three days, those enemas are going to really be pulling stuff from the liver. And then you want to you give the body some time to break on that. So maybe in the beginning, but it's not necessary. And if it's your first fast, don't do it. But if, you're, if you've done enemas your whole life, you might want to do a couple on the first day or two to get that last poo out. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. might just pump things and get you going. Okay, the last thing here is know your numbers. Okay, we're coming up on the hour mark, which we're right on time. Know your numbers, know your numbers, know your numbers. Now, this can be very complicated and confusing for people. It's not necessary to know your numbers, but 
if you know that you have some challenges with blood sugar handling, know your numbers, know your numbers, okay? I always tell people, you need to get your hands on a blood glucose meter, okay? They generally cost about 30, 40 bucks for the meter. They get you on the strips, okay? Um, the ketone strips run between one and two bucks a test, okay? So you buy a kit on Amazon, it'll be here in two days. I sell them here, they're 80 bucks here, but you can buy them, I think you can actually buy them for like $10 cheaper on Amazon, just because they give you free shipping. Anyway, nonetheless, test your glucose, because when you're fasting, when your glucose starts to go down, your ketones start to go up. That's your marker that you've turned into a fat burner. And that's your marker so that you know that your body and innate are working and doing their job. Okay? It generally takes people around that day two, if they haven't been running on fat already, it takes them a solid day and a half of no food to run out of all of their glycogen and carbohydrate storage in their body. Okay? The reason I like people, they tell people to know their numbers is because, you know, you start tracking this stuff and you can kind of really gauge where you're at and you can get some really good motivation out of this by knowing your numbers. Okay, I told you the numbers on here and I wrote them up here. So blood monitoring. Remember, you don't need sugar to run your body. You can run on fat. So blood monitoring kit, we're going to spend around 100 bucks. You're going to measure your ketones or glucose and your ketones. When your glucose levels drop be below... 70 milligrams per deciliter, you're getting to that sweet zone. Um, I have been to doctors before and they've tested my blood sugar. They would have flipped out if I popped this number on that test. They, oh my God, oh my God, something must be wrong with you. Okay, they would have blown an O-ring if I pulled that number up on a, on a test. Now I'm telling you that they're checking for something else. All right, we're trying to get into fat burning mode, which is called ketone. All right, when that number goes down, this number goes up. If this number stays high, you guys know that if you're 120 blood, you're diabetic. Okay, if your resting blood sugar or resting and fasting blood sugar level is 110 and you haven't eaten for 12 hours, you're pre diabetic and you're going to be diabetic unless you get your glucose and insulin in line. Okay, so. If you pop that number out on a test, someone's going to go through the roof. I'm telling you, the only way to turn into a fat burner is for that number to start getting down under 70. And when that number gets down under 70, the ketones start going up. And throughout the fast, you're going to be between 0.5 millimoles of ketones. I wrote this down for you. And 5 millimoles. The sweet spot from Thomas Seyfried, one of the most brilliant minds alive right now. He is marvelous in treating cancer. He says the sweet spot for fighting cancer is between two and four millimoles and around 60 for your sugar. Did I write that in here? Oh wait, maybe I was off a little bit. I wrote that in here for you. Glucose from Professor Thomas Safery. The target zone he calls it. 60s for your glucose and around 3.0 for your millimoles of fat burning. Now trust me, this guy knows what he's talking about. People, he's, careful I say this, he's fixing cancer by getting people burning fat and fasting them. So he knows what happens to cancer cells when you're higher. He knows what happens when you're lower. That's his target zone. And you can get there. You don't need, you don't need him to do it. You just need to know how to get there. So I tell people, test your blood. Don't go over the top testing your blood and don't turn into some you know, crazy testing all day long. Remember, you're going to have the dawn effect, so test sometime in the morning. Don't test right when you wake up because you will get, your levels will be different. Test mid to late morning, see where you're at, and then test again in the afternoon once, once or twice. Or When I was doing this, I was only, by the end, I, I, I was just testing because I wanted to see. I was keeping a log. So I got up to 4.7. That's the, five days, I was at 4.7. I did a blood, I did a blood test. I should do this. I'll do this for you right now. See where I'm at. Okay? I don't know where I'm at. So <clears throat> I've been preparing for this fast for only about 10 days. I've trained my body in the past year and a half to run on fat. 
So once you've trained your body to do it the first time and you've stayed there for a long enough time, your body gets there faster every time. Okay? So I went off of, off of my ketogenic diet for a little bit and then I went back on it. So I'm going to do a test right now. I tested myself two days ago and I'm going to show you where I'm at. Okay? And then I tested some people the other night too in class. It's pretty cool. So we get a drop of blood. Okay, so this is going to tell you if I'm a fat burner or a sugar burner instantly here in a couple seconds. 1.8 millimoles, okay? So my body is running on fat right now, not sugar. And you guys know, I made it through a whole day with intense high energy all day long. Does so test glucose as well? Yeah. This is, a, yeah. this is a ketone strip in a meter that tests glucose and ketones. So what's your glucose? My glucose is going to be down in the 70s. You put in a glucose strip. I put in a glucose strip. So different strip oh. for each test. That's how, they get, that's how they make money, right? <coughs> so over here I have my glucose and then I have my ketone strips. Okay, for those of you who are going to be doing this and monitoring, I'll teach you more about this in one of my, my videos or else I'll send you a link. Okay, now remember, as soon as you get above 0.5, you're a fat burner. That's when we get mental acuity up, mental de uh, fog goes down, and your body starts burning more effectively and efficiently. Inflammation leaves your body. So I'm in a state of ketosis right now. All right. Now, when I go into this fast and I'm, I'm in this range, I'm going to be feeling a lot better on day one, day two, and day three than someone who is running on sugar because I'm adapted. And that's why I always tell people to get into it. If you adapt early, you rock it. Okay, so that's one of those, we might say, biohacks. Are your ketone levels usually higher first thing in the morning, did you say, because of no. the effect? No. The ketone levels, now remember, if glucose goes up, ketones have to go down. Right. Okay, so in the morning, because of the dawn effect and, ep uh, and uh, epinephr epinephrine and, um, and cortisol and, and the glucose that gets released, if there's anything left, is going to go up. So you're going to always read a little bit higher for glucose in the mornings. That's why I say just wait a little bit. Always. Most of the time. Yep. So if you fast for the five days and it resets your body, but you go back to a regular diet. You won't. You won't. No, you won't want to. You won't want to, okay? You won't, you won't pray, right? Um, so, so here's the thing. So you're gonna, if you make it through, the, through this fast, it's going to change your life, okay? And you might not make it through the, this fast <laughs> this time, and that's okay because this is already going to change your life, all right? But when you go through a fast and you have your intention and your why to go through it, mm -hmm. and you know how much healing happened and how your body changed and how good you feel, mm -hmm. you're not going to want to go back to the way that you were living. And if you do, it's okay. You just now have a, a, a gauge a, a gauge for where you need to go and your compass is now changed and set a different way. Well, in your example, you're already on a ketogenic diet, so why would you want to fast? Because I want my body to be its best. And I know that I have physical, chemical, and emotional stressors constantly beating me down. And I know that there's more healing inside of this body. Right, so we go back to you know what the Bible says or what, what what researchers tell us. You're designed to fast and fast on a regular basis, not just How do. How often would you do the five days? I, my set a goal at the beginning of the year that I was going to do three five days, a year. A year. Okay. Now, remember, I told you there's lots of different types of fasting, and we could spend a lifetime, and people do talking about fasting. For this fast, it's a water fast, and we're trying to make it a couple days, and we will. Okay, so we could go on forever about different types of fasting. So um, let's just leave it at that for right now. Okay? On the front page, other things to consider. So water only fast. I already talked about all this. Um, look, if you want to do the fast and you, you, you make a commitment to yourself that you want to do it and you're too afraid of the coffee um, thing, Give yourself permission to have a little five ounce 
cup of black organic coffee in the morning. Allow yourself to do it. You're going to have an amazing wild journey with this fast and it's not going to screw it up that much. Trust me. Cool? Mm -hmm. If you get to a point where you feel like you have to have something or you're going to lose it or you've become to that point of fear and weakness, go to the store and have some chicken broth, organic chicken broth, and have yourself a little glass of chicken broth. Pray, meditate, refocus. Most of the time, that's enough to get you right back on track. You're still winning. You're going to have an amazing fast. Understand? So there's no shame or harm in any way that you do this. Okay? Um, I gave you some details when I'm going to start. The only reason I'm telling you when I'm going to start is because I'm going to um, be doing those videos. And I encourage you to follow along with me on Facebook. Um, and that's what that last thing says. There's one last piece, and then I'll, I'll, I'll stick around for about 15 more minutes, and then I need to go home to my family. There's one more piece, um, and I asked Wendy to come talk really briefly about, and, and it's a product that she uses and provides. It's called a SIA. Okay? On the fast, I'm going to be using a SIA. Um, she'll tell you why, and then I'll answer some questions afterward why I'm choosing to use it. It's salt water that is restructured to a redox signaling form so that your cells can communicate and heal faster. It's benign on a fast because it's salt water. I'm telling you to drink salt water. I fasted with salt water in a SIA on my last five day fast and I, I, just, I just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, she, Wendy asked me, she said, how much did you drink? I said, I don't even know. I just let Nate tell me. I had it sitting on my desk and I'd look at it and be like, nah. And I'd look at it again and be like, yeah, I want some. And I'd pour an ounce and I'd take an ounce and I'd hold it in my mouth and swish it around and be like, cool. I just kind of liked it. I enjoyed it and I think it did a lot for me. A lot of doctors that I know around the world fast on this product as well. And they're the ones who really, Wendy introduced it to me four years ago. Um, and these doctors really started talking about it and they were fasting their patients on it. And I knew Wendy and I had some, so I did it. So um, it's not necessary to use on a water fast, but if you're interested, I asked Wendy to come. Um, and if you want, you can buy a bottle of it from her. It's, it comes out to be about right. You know, a five-day fast, you go through about a bottle. Okay? So um, take five minutes, explain to everyone about redox signaling and ASEA. Okay. And I'll stick around until 8, but I'm going to leave at 8. Okay. Okay. Want to talk on that? Perfect. So just to, to clarify, I mean, yes, it, the ingredients are salt and water, but it goes through a patented three to four day electromagnetic process that rearranges the molecules, like you said. So it's technically not salt water. Kind of like when you make a loaf of bread, you put the oil and the eggs and all that, and then it's changed. It's, there's not really oil in there anymore. You know what I mean? Um, so um, some big yays on this is in the studies they have shown that um, that it increases your gluti glutathione production and efficacy of five to eight hundred percent. Think about that. I mean, there's just not, you can't eat that many blueberries and, 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 and you know, get that from a pill. It's just not possible. Um, speaking of blueberries, this, this, is, this product is native to our body. Our mitochondria already make these redox signaling molecules. So when we ingest this, we're supplementing that cellular communication. For example, if my house was on fire and I picked up my cell phone and tried to call the fire department and I was weak cellularly, they couldn't get the message. It's not that they can't come with the fire truck and the hoses and the equipment and, and save my house, i.e. my body can heal itself. They're just not getting the signal that, hey, we got a problem over here. We got a bunch of you know, wacky cells that are replicating. So, and it, and it doesn't need, need to go through the digestive process. It's like literally absorbed through the mucous membranes and crosses the blood-brain barrier. And the body will get this and go, oh, thank you. I know what this is. I know exactly what to, what to do with it. And it will prioritize. For example, if something's going on in my pancreas right now, I won't know until I'm symptomatic, right? Well, this, this has been occurring for how long? The body knows. And it's going to go in there and take care of it. Um, also, in studies, they proved that this, the people consuming ASEA are burning uh, fat. They're fat, they're stored fat. So this is right in alignment. It's, it's sparing muscle glycogen. Um, anybody heard of Annalise Gettleman? Yeah? She's a, like a, what would you call her, a nutritionist guru. She's written 30-something books. 
She she got introduced in, with ASEA, I don't know, maybe two years ago. She is literally rewriting her books to include this in her like flash fu fat, fat flush burning and, and edu nutritional education books and things. So um, comes in a liquid. You don't drink it from the bottle because it's bioactive, identical to what our cells make. So we put it into a plastic or, or a glass cup and they recommend two ounces in the morning and two ounces at night. Again, you guys using it during the fast, you can play with that a little bit. And, and it's, the detoxing with this is amazing. So I think it's going to be fun if you're already detoxing going through all this, you're kind of getting the, a head start with the ASEA to kind of just do it all at, at once. And it's going to help the cells talk and the body and get rid of things and, and whatnot. And then it also comes in a topical gel. This is the same technology, just in a gel form with four ingredients, two of which are what it's in this bottle. The other two are what make it a gel. This is a concentrated many times um, strength of this Redux technology. So, you know, if you got something going on that needed to be pinpointed, put it there. You got a headache, put it there. You can keep I put on my lymph nodes, all good parts like that. So, just want to be really brief about that. I'm I'm going to be really praying for you guys doing this fast mm -hmm. and doing your ASEA. And I do have bottles here, uh, 35 bucks, if you would like. I have four with me. And Wendy, you can, um, if, if, if people don't buy those, you can leave them with yeah. me and they might buy them on Monday. If they yeah, so yeah, yeah. 35 for the bottle, what about the other one? The gel is um, wholesale $40. And how long does that last? They say that if you were to use it just on your face twice a day, it should last you at least a month. A little bit goes a long way. There's no sparkle, or smell, or stickiness, or oiliness. It's really awesome. Yeah, Anne's used it. Yeah, it almost feels like it tones you. Mm. Yeah, than, it, you'd yeah. feel that tightening because yeah. the cells are already producing more cells underneath and pushing out the dead cells. Mm -hmm. So it does that. So this is healing from the inside out, and then this is a healing from the outside in. Mm -hmm. Just I want to add something. My um, most of you know our family history, and I'm Dr. Andrew's mom. And mm -hmm. um, my one son, Brent, was very seriously burned last year, a year ago, and he did use those products and. We fully believe he truly had a miraculous healing. The doctors mm -hmm. had said they had never seen anyone heal as quickly as he did, and he used these products and uh, and some other products as well. And we did all nutritional um, therapy and that with him too. But he did use those products with his very serious burns yeah. and skin graft surgery and everything. And he truly. How, how did listen. you apply them? Just. Just a little bit. We or used a topical gel, and he drank the ASEA. Um, we're spraying it. We're spraying, oh, yeah. we're spraying yeah. it. Spraying mm -hmm. it. Oh. Misting it over his burns. He had skin graft yeah. surgery and burned mm -hmm. and down very seriously. So he's doing wonderful now, and he did use one of these products, and he loved them, and we yeah. really so attribute it to part of his healing. Yeah, this is the. Uh, I mean, this is the technology that went into turning this into a chemical structure that is already produced in our body. I mean, it's mind, it's mind blowing. They said it couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be. It, it really is, you know. So if you've heard of this product, I mean, the science behind it is kind of like you can't figure out quite how it's so good because of what it is until you really understand. Well, they were able to change the molecular structure of salt water to make it match what your cells need to communicate. So it's really cool stuff. Do you have a question? Uh, I have a son who uh, has well, he has high levels of lead mm. because of serving over in Iraq. Would that help cleanse the, to the toxicity? Okay. Absolutely. So, so a lot of people say, "Well, it help with my, with my this or my that or my thyroid or whatever." The answer to that question every time is, "Are there cells involved?" Yes. Everything cellular: lung cells, eye cells, muscle cells. Well, would it replace a medication therapy or a supplement no? Therapy? No, there's no nutritional value to it. Remember, it's just like the ground level if you're going to build a house. Then you put the nutrition, the walls and the windows and the other parts and the exercise and, you know, the other things. So this is strengthening your ground foundation so that all of those things communicate and work better. Okay. And incidentally, you can put in any kind of a spray bottle except for metal. And you can spray this into your eyes with practice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Inhale it into the lungs. Spray it anywhere you want. It's like liquid gold, so you... Just enjoy it. There's, there's no taste. And, and to spray salt water in your eyes, that burns, right? Mm -hmm. So it's an instant proof that so that's not salt water. This is the detoxification capacity of the cell, but this doesn't bind 
the lead is below his body. Oh. Which then means that it comes with this. Way this way. Way. That's yeah. the last yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to dawdle? You're welcome. I'll tell you about a really cool fast while everyone's packing up. My little nephew, Penn, inspired me to do this.